Hey folks, it's Adam from AM Music and today I'm going to talk about how to use the sampler in Logic Pro. And there's a few different ways that you can do this. So let's drag in a sample. I've got my Apple loops open here. You can do that with O. Uh, and I've got one ready to go. I've got a Latin drum beat here to go. Just that kind of reggaeton kind of beat. Say I like the sound of the drums, but I wanted to put that into a new rhythm. What I could do is drag that over, and rather than dropping it straight onto the arrangement page or the main window, I'm going to move it over to the left where it says drag Apple Loops here to create instrument tracks. And it says create a new track using the quick sampler. There's two different versions, the drum machine designer, the sample, Alchemy. So that's using this sampler in Alchemy and then the sampler, which is like the main sampler in Logic. You can layer multiple samples on top of each other. Um, so uh, the quick samplers here, the two different quick samplers, one's original, one's optimized. The optimized basically analyzes the waveform when it goes in. It will work out kind of the best tuning, the best timing, the pitching. It's going to optimize it for you to do some manipulations on it so i generally use the optimized to be honest so if we drag that on optimized but they look exactly the same by the way let's drag that in and you'll get this window come up and this is showing you the waveform and what that's done is it's split it across the keyboards the midi keyboard so every time i hit a different note c d e on the keyboard it's going to play each of these relevant slices and it sliced it where the transient is so where there's a main note basically where there's a hit a different bit of the drum beat so that's pretty cool and you can split it up in different ways you can go to say equal divisions and then you get it every kind of quarter note um, i'm going to leave it on transient and you can change the sensitivity how often these markers are sliced kind of thing so the sensitivity changes the length of those slices so that's kind of this area in this section here you've got modulation so you've got lfo1 and lfo2 they can be they can be used as a modulation for some of these other effects over here the pitch the filter and the amp and you've got two LFOs, LFO1, LFO2, and then you've got a mod matrix here. We're not going to go into that, but you could, but essentially you could have an LFO trigger the pitch so that the LFO, when it goes whoop, 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 and it will kind of pitch left and right. So things that you probably will use though is the pitch. You might think, oh, I like that kick, but how does it sound? Plus 12 or minus 12, an octave. So you've got the pitch there got fine tune you've got glide which kind of is a portamento then got filter as well which is quite nice and you've got all the different uh, logic filters in here you've got resonance and you've got drive so that might be quite nice if you want a distorted kind of sound or if you've got some 808s that you're sampling So say if you wanted to do a different beat like that, I'm just triggering my MIDI keyboard there. Uh, volume over here, you've got polyphony and you've got pan. I don't really touch those. You might want to move the volume down or up. Uh, and other things is the envelope. This one down here is for the amplitude. So this one corresponds with this one. This one corresponds with the filter and this one corresponds with the pitch. Um, so if I wanted to draw out the kick drum a bit, we can change the envelope make it snappy and you can just click and move those points around to kind of design the sound how you want it to be I'm not going to go through them all in this video because there's so many different features but let's go to the classic mode so I'm playing a really low C there and as long as I hold that note it's going to play so if I play a bit higher up say like a high C on my MIDI keyboard So you see the pitch that you play on your keyboard is going to affect the speed, basically, and the pitch. So that's more your classic kind of sampler mode, but you can also change the playback direction on this one. So that's quite cool, and you can loop sections. So say, uh, let's go loop forward. And then this turns yellow and then you can move it to just do a little section. And start to do some weird stuff. So that was because the loop was on alternate. You could just have it on forward. Or you could have it on reverse. Uh, then you close it there. Here, no loop. 
Okay, and you see this is the flex marker. You also have it up here, but this is gonna keep the tempo the same, but change the pitch. So now if I hit my very high C. <laughs> Sounds like an asthmatic donkey or something. So the tempo's staying the same, but the pitch is changing. And there's going to be some artifacts from that happening, but... but it's quite cool. You can get some interesting things happening. Uh, you can change the speed as well. Here, if you want to go double time. As when you're on a slice, you've got the same features below. Uh, one shot is pretty similar to classic, but this time when you're in classic, you have to hold down the note. But if you just press it once in one shot mode, it will play play the whole thing. So it's this I don't use the one shot mode very often. Got the different playbacks. You can have a playback forward or backwards with the one shot and recorder. So you can actually record something in, but you can record directly into the sampler. So if you've got a microphone, uh, select recording input. So I need to go to uh, input down here, input, and on my interface, this is one. So now you see level meter, you see this is active. And if I start talking in here, you'll see that I'm starting to record some sampling stuff. So if I now hit stop, I've got that. And it will replace what was in there before. So if I start talking in here, you'll see that I'm starting to record some sampling stuff. So if I now I start talking in here, you'll see that I'm you see that I'm starting to record. And you can really start to manipulate stuff in quite a cool way with the sampler. So that's how you use the recorder. Um, and then once you've recorded it like I did, you then come to any of your other modes. And you can come up with your own melodies and stuff. And this is my favorite way to use the sampler really is in the slice mode. So say um, I've recorded that in and now I want to make something weird out of it. Bye, bye. So something like that, you can then just hit record, or as long as it's armed, and you hit R. Space, and you'll see that you've recorded it in, and you've got it in the MIDI editor as well. So if I just close that sec, you can now start to edit it in the MIDI editor. Uh, let's go eighth notes. Whatever you want to do. So that is the first way you can sample something. Let's just take some guitar now. Okay, that will do. So we're going to drag in a different loop this time. We're going to come under here. Basically covered those two, the originals, the same as the optimized, as I said. Uh, drum machine designer. Uh, let's not look at that one now. Let's go to sample alchemy next. If you know logic, you'll realize this kind of looks a little bit like alchemy. And what you can do with the sample alchemy is you can use three of their modes to sample stuff. So there's basically granular synthesis or granular sampling, additive sampling and spectral sampling. So you can see the waveform here. So if I'm just playing a note on my keyboard again. And you've got different options. You can change the speed. So that's cool. You can change the pan. You can change the course. You've got a few different controls here that relate to granular synthesis. So the size of the grains. You can start to get really weird with it. I really like granular synthesis number of grains. You can add some random timing in or some random panning. And then you've got a filter at the end, you have to turn it on first. Uh, then you've got additive. additive you can change the symmetry the harmonics whether they're odd or even you can change pitch variances and number of partials so if I go symmetry so that's gonna mess with the sound I can switch it to be more odd or even harmonics pitch variance 
number of partials. That makes it more simple. So you can see with the additive, you can make some really weird stuff as well. You've got the filter the same as before on the end. So that's additive. And then you've got spectral at the end. So you can change the course pitch here, key tracking, size, and the center frequency of the format. You can change these modes, by the way. There's some interesting about the blur of the cloud. So yeah, you get some interesting effects with the spectral as well. And with the additive, you've also got some of the things you can change. You can change whether it's partials or formant and the granular just has the single mode. Okay, you can also add things like, so at the top, you've got loops as well. You can turn loop on it. sequence of notes there. Uh, you can scrub. Quite cool, you've got this other mode which is bow. Now we'll go back and forwards on like the nearest transient. Which is nice and you've got an arpeggiator as well. That's pretty cool. You can also add multiple layers in. So if you add in A, B, C, D, now you've got four layers on top of each other. So A is on that one. If you then bring B on, now I've got B selected. You can have B on something different. So you can have multiple different modes per each sampler as well. So A is on additive and B is on granular. So we then wanted to bring C back in. Notice it's on green. And let's put that on spectral. And you can also mix them as well to be different levels. So that's really cool. And they're arpeggiating because they're currently in uh, arp mode, but you can just have classic. And it's going to play them all together, or you can loop. <laughs> Snapping is on by default, but you can change that to go to transients if you want. Um, you can change the envelope at the top, either the amp envelope or the modulation envelope, but let's just go amp and you've got the same attack, decay, sustain, release as usual. And that's sample alchemy. You can do a lot with it. It's quite powerful. Uh, let's move on. So let's go back to some drums. Okay, cool little jazzy drum thing there. So if we drag it, and then you go to Drum Machine Designer this time. And it's basically loaded your, it's basically loaded a sample as a Drum Machine Designer plugin. So, so these are all linked to my keyboard, C, D, E, F. So it's made a drum pad out of them basically. So if you have an external drum pad, then it's great for playing. So if you go to Sampler Main, you can see the main waveform. If we go back to sampler detail, then you've got the same thing that you had on the quick sampler. You'll hear the pitch is now changing. So if I come to pad controls and now anytime I click this, I can change each individual pad. Cut off. Uh, filter resonance, filter drive. Pitch envelope, reverb, delay, volume, and pan. So yeah, you can you can incorporate it into a drum machine designer basically. 
yeah, I'd use the pad controls mostly when you're in drum machine designer mode. But that's essentially it with drum machine designer. So let's look at one final type of sampling you can do. Let's just choose mallets. Okay, cool. So we're gonna bring that in. We're gonna this time look at the samplers, open note. And this could be a whole video on itself, but what that's done is it's now kind of spread it across the piano like it normally would. So what this has done is it's kind of a multi-layered sampler. So you see these, these are the volumes. So if I play it quiet, one note. The harder I hit that, it kind of falls into a different category of whether it's quiet or loud. So there's technically four samples layered on top of each other here, but they're only activating at certain velocities. that it's got the same, it's using the same sample, but it's pitching it. So it's spreading the same sample over all these pitches. But then when we get a bit higher up the keyboard, we've now got two different samples. We've got a shaker and a sound. But then you can add in all these extra kind of synth stuff, a bit like the quick sample. You've got the mod matrix, you've got, uh, that's the mod matrix there. You've got the modulations. Uh, you've got mapping, which is where we're in now, and you've got the zone. But yeah, the mapping is kind of what makes this one a bit more interesting. You can create groups uh, and you can layer. So this is just one group, but you could then bring that one in. And this second group, I haven't actually done anything with it. It's loaded this sample on a single. So that note, because I'm playing it, is shared by the African chant as well. It's going to play both of those groups. Um, what I can do is if I come back here, if I spread that out across the whole of the keyboard roughly, now I can... So say so I wanted that one in as well. You can do a zone auto map. And that's going to load it across the thing. Now basically you've got three different samples playing at the same time. So you'd probably use this more for like creating a virtual instrument and multi-layering lots of different samples. So you could create some really weird stuff with that. Okay, that is everything I'm gonna show you in this one. But uh, yeah, hope you found that helpful. And if you have any questions, please let me know.